This is Rocky. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> this is Rocky. Rocky, and this is Bella. Oh, doggies. <laughs> Those are doggies. <laughs> okay, so let's start here. Start here at the vegetable patch. The vegetable patch. So with the sand dollars that we picked up from the beach. So we have mizuna in the foreground and bok choy, which is growing up in the background, and Robert's radishes. And mustard greens and more bok choy. Mm. And a um, bay leaf. Oh, that's pretty. A little baby bay leaf. And five Tuscan blue rosemaries. And let the gardenia bloom. To become a hedge someday. Look at this, Mom. <laughs> it's a single um, flower gardenia, and that just popped open this morning. And it smells divine. And a little boat. My little boat. With a couple we little to chairs. Go sail away. <laughs> In the corner, a cayenne pepper. Oh, it has a bloom now. Yeah, and a stevia plant in front of that with very, very sweet leaves, which you must try. Actually, I did eat one. Did you? Yeah, it was. It tastes just like stevia. Rose, uh, oregano and marjoram, who are very closely related and look almost indiscernible in the pot. That's true. What did you have in the front? Uh, the stevia, which oh, was okay. being completely stifled by these two, and a giant epazote in the back, which we will meet later. Over here, two kinds of thymes, opposed by two kinds of sage, so smothering a little bit of tarragon, which needs to get moved because it's mm. not getting enough. I used that the other night, Mom. I made um, chicken tarragon from Spice Islands. It was really good. Don't you love the her planter boxes, which are uh, wine, wine, crates. wine crates? The gophers come up even here, and that little green thing in the corner is... A gopher, a, a gopher repellent, which doesn't work. Anti-gopherine. <laughs> which doesn't work. <laughs> it makes weird cricket sounds. Okay, what's this one? So the next here is a hybrid garden salsa pepper, which is kind of like a jalapeno and supposedly delicious. And a red onion, which I stuck in the dirt to see which would happen. Moving on to a cilantro and a parsley and a chive and a dill, which the rest of them have smothered. And it didn't survive. Isn't that funny? Sorrel in the white pot. A little bit of a mustard green mm. over there. And Chinese broccoli gone to heaven. It's up to here. Wow. <laughs> Through the lemon tree. And look at this little lemon tree. It's been and struggling. The Meyer lemon tree has been pruned and over pruned and uh, has produced a crop which we're anxiously waiting for. And then, here we are, tomato central. In the green pot, we have a sugar snap tomato. I think it's called sugar snap. Sugar snack tomato. One Ooh. ounce deep red, super sweet fruit, and it's a mango plant. Oh, yeah. Very happy, very strong. Next to it is an orange cherry tomato surrounded by basil and marigolds. Which, according to the nursery, helped the tomatoes grow better. So, Mom, you should plant some in the base of yours. And a little pretty pretties. Pretty pretties. Moving on to the side table, we have a seascape strawberry with product getting ready to ripen. Baby on strawberry. The vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look how big these strawberry leaves are. It appears to be happy. Look. It's like bigger than my hand. It appears to be happy. And oh, we have and look. A little birdie the blue nesting bird of happiness. in the grass. And I found that in a pot abandoned in one of her apartments that was empty and adopted it. Oh, looky, looky. More berries. More berries all around the bush. So, three more tomato, mystery tomato plants, which seeded themselves in my friend's garden, and she has shared them with me. And the dogs love Doggies to smell. Love they don't do anything, but they like to sniff. That's Bella with a lovely little chaise. So, back view of where we were and a wide view of the garden. It's quite deep. How? Like 50 feet? Yeah. Yeah. 50 by 25. Yeah. With a giant cypress. 
in the center. And Anna has done this all within the last month. There was nothing back here but crabgrass and nettles. And dog poo. And dog poo. Lots of dog poo. <laughs> and an old Chinese thingy. The bluebird came from this pot that sat right here. Ah, oh, yes. And now nothing sits there. I'll put a frog in there. It'd be more appropriate. Yeah. A nice little or cacti. A tortoise. A tortoise would be good. Mm -hmm. My mom has lots of frogs because of her vocation. I want you to see this, Mom, at the base. You see that little plant growing there? That is nettles. She has nettles all over the backyard. It's the only thing that seems to grow here on its own volition besides the crabgrass, which you can see hasn't been disturbed here. Isn't that interesting? Makes gardening a challenge. I've convinced her to buy gloves. Yay. <laughs> and I've obeyed. Yes, <laughs> she's obeyed. Okay, here is this pretty um, Chinese lilac. Dwarf Korean, oh. and it is, amazingly enough, about to bloom again. Yay. Which is, so in pretty. my view, highly unusual. The agapanther. Next to a... We, and we know it's an agapantha, but we we're calling it agapanther because it's funny. <laughs> rose geranium. It's not rose. I keep smelling it and I can't tell what it is. They lied to you. It's not rose, but it's very yeah. scented. This was a little... A little tiny little sapling in a four-inch pot um, yes. two years ago. Maybe more. And we had it in a pot, and then recently I put it in the ground, and it took off. Yeah, I, I got it as a... Um, a chunk of shrubbery, you know, from the farmer's market to use for mm. cooking, and I rooted it and potted it. Next to it are alpine strawberries. With flowers. Which have gotten quite big and everything, it looks like it needs to be spread out more. Behind them are two foxgloves. One is apricot peach, the one on the right, mm. and this one is white with little burgundy dots inside the bells. Mm. But they're not here yet. Belichka, you're in the way. Can you scoot? Okay, come on. Rocky likes Rocky. to smell everything. Rocky likes to smell everything. Yes. Rocky, please. Doggies. Doggies, out. Um, this is a lemon verbena. Yum. And this thing I bought for its leaves. Huchera, palace purple. Whatever that is. Very purple. It says, maple-like purple foliage with cream, creamy white or greenish flowers on two to three inch stems. Mm. Blooms late spring through summer in part shade. So here we are, part shade. I'm very excited to see what the flowers will look like. Sounds pretty. It's about 7.30 in the morning right now, so the sun is coming from the south, obviously. <laughs> Another agapanther. And a rose, a true delicious rose geranium clipped from a neighbor as we were walking past. Mm. And it's blooming. Two sea lavenders and a lily behind them in the green pot. Moving on to the geranium assortment. Geranium row, look at those colors. Ooh. Colors. And in front of them are little blue salvia plants which are so cute and such nice contrast. Like blue and brilliant reds. Yes. This little darling thing, I just repotted yesterday because it was not happy where it was and it looks beautiful in a blue pot. Oh, it does. It has darling little blue fl white flowers. It is called Claytonia Sibirica. Candy flower. Candy flower. But I don't know anything about it other than that it's really cute. And it looks like it's related to miner's letters. Okay, so we're going to pause for a moment and we'll be back with part two.